Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make that dress you saw in the picture. Now I will try to fling it up here. It's poofy and it's big. So you're probably not going to be able to see it real well. But it has, it's got little dandelions on it because she took pictures outside in it. See that dandelion seed. Okay, it has all this color tool on it. Um, this flower I got off of eBay, but you can get any type of flower at a craft store. Um, you don't even have to put a flower on if you don't want to. But it's got the straps here, and then the back Velcros. So it's actually just the cr crochet part. It's just one, it's really easy, straight. I'm sorry, it's so poofy, it's taking up my whole desk. It's just one straight across row, rows of single crochet. And then the straps are added. And then it Velcros up around her back and ties around her neck, as you've seen in the picture. So I'm going to remove this because it's taking out my whole desk. I'm going to show you what all you're going to need. <clears throat> Okay, show you everything you're going to need for this project. Okay, for the top, for the yarn, I use Caron Simply Soft, which is just a four-ply, 100% um, medium weight acrylic. You don't have to use this. Any type of four-ply yarn will work. Um, this uh, doesn't take much. This wasn't even a full scheme when I started, so probably a, little, well, a half a roll, probably or less of, of that. And then I used a size... I, which is a five and a half millimeter crochet hook okay now also you're gonna need tool now this is a tool I got and this tool came from Walmart um, there were 31 yards per roll now I got eight different colors I got red orange yellow green light blue dark blue purple and pink so but you can get as many different colors as you want or you can make it all one solid color um, but you're going to need about 300 yards total so I had to buy two rolls of each color of two rolls of my eight color I didn't um, use all of the second roll not much of any of it um, I know a little bit of it but since I did it in eight colors, I had to buy one of each color. Of course, if you do it in a solid color, you're going to need about 300, 320 yards of, of tool, maybe. Something like that. But don't open them all at once in case you can save your receipt in case you get too many. Because that's just an estimate. That's So you can take it back if you've got too much. So it's always good to have too much. I think that too little, you can always take it back. Um, but this is six inches thick. That's what I got. Um, and then you are going to need Velcro. This came from Walmart. Also, it's in, um, across from the buttons in the sewing section. It's 5 8 inch thick Velcro. And what you want to... I used hot glue to put my Velcro on. So you're going to need hot glue. If you don't want to do that, you can use a regular sewing thread and needle and sew it on also. Either way works fine. Um... And also, when you start to use the tool, it gets really staticky like this. And it bunches up into one big ball. So what you have to do to get that out and make it look nice and straight is you need a spray bottle. And then you need some liquid fabric softener and some water. So what you do is you take probably, I don't know, a quarter cup of fabric softener and mix it with a cup and a half two cups of water something like that um, shake it up real good and then at the end or while you're putting the tool on just whenever you need to and it starts to get really staticky um, I'll show you how to do it in the video you just spray it all over your tool and comb it out with your hands and that'll make it lay nice and straight but if you don't have this um, to straighten it out it's really going to be a big ball of static so you really need to do that any brand of fabric softener is fine you know, as long as it's liquid you don't have to use that brand but in your spray bottle and your water and I think that's all that you need if you want to put that rose on or some type of flower on in the front 
So let's go ahead and get started on it. It's actually pretty easy. Okay, the size I made is for my daughter. Now it'll probably fit a size two to four year old. Now um, you can adjust the tool length for as long or as short as you want it, um, you know, by cutting it shorter or longer. And you can actually adjust the, how big around the waist it is. Now I chained for my size 81 stitches. Now if you want it bigger or smaller, you want your chain stretched not real tight, but stretch a little bit, to wrap around your child's, um, like right underneath the armpit area. Um, and you want to make it overlap each other about an, about three quarters of an inch. It needs to overlap, maybe an inch. So it needs to overlap at the back about an inch. That's how you can adjust the size. Um, so your chain would wrap around the child's, um, you know, like the underarm area, chest area, chest, I guess, and make it, make your chain wrap around like that, about an inch over. That way you can put your Velcro and stuff on the back later. But that's kind of how you can adjust. That's how I measured for Evelyn. That's the way I did it. So, but if you want to do it for like a two to four, um, this will this will fit you want to chain 81 because that's what i did i'm going to show you on a smaller scale because i already did it but it's really simple once you get your chain 81 done you just want to single crochet in the second stitch from the hook and then it's just one single crochet in every stitch for the length of the chain Okay, if you're following me and you chained 81, when you get to the end of the row, you should have 80 stitches. Now, from now on, we should always have 80 stitches if you're following along with me. And now we're just going to chain one and turn. And then we single crochet right here back into this very, very first stitch. And then it's just one single crochet across in every stitch. So basically, we're just, for this bodice part, dress top we're just doing rows of single crochet it's really easy so it's one single in every stitch until you get to the end and when you get to the end you still should have 80 stitches if you're following me <clears throat> if you're doing a different size you just need to have what the same number of stitches at the end of every every row and then when you get to the end, you just chain one and turn and go across again. Now you, what you want to do is you want to do a total of 12 rows of one single crochet in every stitch. And remember, 80 single crochets, if you're following me, at the end of every row. Just start again. Chain one and turn. Working that very, very first stitch. Single crochet and repeat it repeat that last row so back and forth rows of one single crochet in every stitch for a total of 12 rows okay once you get your 12 rows of single crochet done now remember you can make this as long as you want for the top part of the dress or as short as you want but what i'm going to do now is do a couple rows to attach the tool to so i'm going to chain one and turn. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a single crochets again but I'm going to work in the front loop only. So you see that each stitch has two loops. So here's the front one, the one that's closest to me, and the back loop is the one that's furthest away. So what I want to do is go into the this very first stitch but I'm just going to go into that front, that front one loop and single crochet just like that and then again front loop only of the next stitch and the front loop only of every stitch so all the way to the end of the row So 
So just like that, one single in the front loop only of every stitch until I get to the end of the row. And I still should have 80 stitches when I make it to the end. Okay, once you make it to the end of that row, and we just did the single crochets in the front loops, what we're going to do now is tie off at the end of that row. So we're going to clip our yarn now. And now we're not going to turn our work. What we're going to do is come right back over here. And we're going to work in those back loops that we didn't work in before. So we're going to start here, but if you flip it over, you can see these back loops that we did not work in. Now we're going to work in them. So you want to start into that very first one there. Let's go ahead and get your hook in there and start your yarn in that back loop and chain one. And now we're going to go back into that same loop, same first loop, and single crochet. So now we're going to work all the way across, working one single crochet in those back loops that we skipped on the previous row. And if you look close, you can see it right here. Just go right into it. Single crochet, and then the next one's right here. It might be kind of hard to see in my with my white yarn, but you should be able to see it pretty good if you're looking at it on your piece. Right there's my next one. So I'm just doing the same thing I did on the last row, except for I'm working in this back loop that we didn't work into last time. And I'm going to work in every stitch. Now what's that's doing, if you look, it's giving us two layers on the same row here. So we'll be able to put tool on this layer and double up on the second layer back here. That way it's nice and thick and you shouldn't be able to see through it. So I'm going to continue working across, putting my one single crochet in every stitch, back loop only, until I get back to the beginning. Remember work working in the back loops that we skipped on the last round. So it's kind of like we're working on the last row. It's kind of like we're working the same row because we worked the front loops last time and now we're working the back loops on the same row. But we just want to continue this until we get to the end and we still should have our 80 stitches when we make it to the end of this row. And that is what it kind of looks like. It's just kind of thicker there, double rowed up. Okay, when you make it to the end of that row of working in the back loop, we're just going to tie off again. So just go ahead and tie your yarn off again. hide them tails if you want. So now we have two layers that on the bottom here. So this will be the bottom that we're going to hook our tool to later here. But now we're going to work on the top. So make um, this the front of your work where the slash, these slash rows that you did are facing the right way. So that'll be the front side just like this. Okay for the straps what you want to do is um, since I had 80 stitches on of single crochet, what I did is I counted from this side all the way in 35 stitches and I put a stitch marker. And then I did the same from this end, 35 stitches and then I put a stitch marker. So I have 10 stitches left empty, empty in between my marker. Now if you made yours bigger, just um, all you got to do is count to where you have 10 stitches in between your marker for your straps. And I think that'll work 
for any size if you make it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller but if you're doing like a lot bigger you might want to do um, you know more a few more stitches for the straps but if you're just doing a size bigger or a size smaller I think the the 10 stitches here left in between will be good enough and what you want to do is start your yarn just work basing you like this up here in the corner very first stitch chain one one single crochet back into that same stitch now we're going to work one single crochet in every stitch until you get to the stitch marker okay now once we get up to the stitch marker we're not gonna single crochet into the stitch marker okay I'm gonna single crochet into the one next to the stitch marker and now I'm going to make a long chain now this is going to be the strap that goes up over the shoulder and ties around the neck so it's going to have to be kind of long so And again, this is something that can be adjusted to for however, you know, long you want it to be. I'm going to do 56 chains for mine. I think maybe that'll be enough to go around and make a small tie in the back. So 56, that's what I did. And that's what I'm going to do on the other side too. So if you do the same as me, that's fine. If you do yours shorter, or you might want to do yours quite a bit longer, um, just make sure you keep that number in mind so you can do it on the other strap too. So once you get the chain amount that you want, again, I did 56, we're going to single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. But what I'm going to do is flip my yarn over, and you see this bump on the back there, that one loop? I'm going to work into that loop. Now you don't have to do it this way. You can do it regular. But this makes a cleaner chain if you do it this way. And I'm going to work every stitch on the back of the chain in that one little loop, little bump there that's on the back of each stitch. Every single crochet is going to go into that. So here's the front of the chain. If you just flip it, you can see that little bump on each stitch. And that's it's just one loop and that's what I'm going to go into it takes a little bit more time but it makes your chain look a lot nicer therefore your straps gonna look a lot nicer And if you can't get this, that's fine. You can just do it the regular way. It's not going to hurt anything. But I'm going to do this all the way down for the length of my chain. And oh, if you look at it now, you can see that it makes it look a little bit neater, I think. But I'm going to do that all the way down my chain until I get, until I get down to here. Okay, I've made it to the end of my chain here, and I'm just going to, now what I'm going to do is single crochet into the stitch that has the stitch marker. So I went all the way to the end of my chain, single crochet into this stitch that has the marker, and you can take that marker out. Now you can look and see, you look at your chain, you might have to hold it here and give it a little bit of a stretch. And that's the chain. Remember, you could have always, you can always adjust that link 
if you don't want it as long or as short as mine. Now I'm going to continue putting one single crochet in every stitch until I get to my next stitch marker. So we're cleaning up these edges while we're making the straps. Okay, now this time we're going to single crochet into the stitch with the marker. And then we're going to make our chain. So I chained 56, so I'm going to do that again. And again, I'm going to go down the chain, working my single crochet, starting in the second stitch from the hook, and working in that back little bump loop here on the back of the chain. So single crochet into that second stitch, just working in that one loop on the back of the chain. And I'm going to do this all the way down again, just like I did on the last strap. So it's going to be the same. And remember, if you can't have any trouble get that getting this little bump or that one loop on the back of the chain, you can do it regular. It's still going to be the same. It's not going to make any difference to the pattern anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this until I get this strap made. Okay, I've made it to the end of my chain again. Now remember, we started with a single crochet in the one with our slip, or where our uh, stitch marker is. So we're going to single crochet into the next stitch, and we can take out that stitch marker. And I like to hold my piece right here and give my chain a nice stretch. Or my strap, like that. And now I'm just going to continue single crocheting until I get to the end of the row. One single crochet in every stitch. So we have both our straps made now. And now we're just finishing up, cleaning up this top edge here. And then we can get started on the tool. Okay, once you make it to the end of the row, just go ahead and tie that off, clip your yarn, and then you can hide these tails. So that's what it kind of looks like. You got your straps here. It should tie around. And remember the spacing? You could have made that bigger or smaller. I know some people just don't even have no spacing in between. They make your I think I've seen that they change right together and then it goes around but however you want to do that you know you could have made it wider or smaller than mine but and then we'll go ahead and th the right side still facing this we're going to start putting the tool down here on these two rows of single crochet down here okay what I do is I take the two roll tool and I just take my scissors a nice sharp pair and with the wrapper still on it I just slice it in half takes me a little bit but all the way around you don't have to do it that way but then you come up with two halves like like this and that's the size that we'll be using this because um, this is a six inch roll and we use in these three inch pieces now you don't have to do it that way but that's how I do it kind of slice it in half um, you can also use like a razor blade or something works too my husband helped me slice some of them I think he used the razor blade and I found the scissors work the best, so nice pair of sharp scissors. Cut it in half like that. And then you want to make your tool, you can make it as long as you want. However long you want your dress to be. It can be short, it can be long, depending on what size child you're making it for. 
but however long you want it, double the length of it. Because we're gonna be it'll be in half, put in half, like like this. It'll go on like that. So I made mine is about I'm gonna guess. I don't have a tape measure. Four feet. Maybe uh fifty inches. Each of my so it's probably like three inches, three inches across by 50. Now remember, you don't have to make it that long and you don't have to, I mean, you can make it longer. It's, it depends on whatever you want. But you wanna put two pieces together at that same length in this, if you're doing different colors like I am, in the same color. So I got two reds here. I'm putting them together. Now, tool is not really the funnest to work with, and it nor is definitely not the easiest, but it is time consuming, so a little tedious, it, but it makes a really pretty project when it's finished. As you can see, it's giving me trouble the very first one I'm doing. Okay, line your two pieces up. Okay, I got them lined up together. Now come to your piece. Okay, you want to take your tool. And remember we have the right side of our work facing us. And we're going to work on this bottom row first. And then we'll go work on the top row. So we're going to put it, this tool on kind of like we put fringe on. So split your two rows in half. And remember we're working down here first. Go into that very first stitch here. It's always the hardest one to go into. Like that. Now take your two pieces of tool and kind of lay them on top of each other the best that you can. And what we're going to do, kind of fold them in half to where they're equal on the bottom. And you just take it and grab your tool and pull it through that stitch like that. Put your hand in between there like that and then make sure they're equal at the bottom still and if they're off a little bit just adjust them you don't have to be perfect because we will trim it up at the end but then just take them and pull them right through that loop and pull it nice and tight now we're going to do that on every single stitch across the bottom and then we're going to do it on every single stitch across the top so it's going to get really tight looking really poofy looking so now you grab your next color or if you're using the same color whatever you get your two pieces of tool that you cut and you put them on top of each other the best that you can kind of fold them in half to where they're equal at the bottom and then you go directly into the next stitch on the bottom make sure you're getting the next stitch don't skip any stitches go right through it take your tool Here's the top of my work. Pull it through like that. Put your hand through it. Make sure they're still equal at the bottom. And if they're not, straighten them out. And then pull them through nice and tight. Like that. Pull them nice and tight. Now it's going to get really bunchy. And that's what you want. You want to try to minimize the, the see-through of the tool as best as you can. So take your next color or whatever colors you're using. Put your two pieces of tool together. And go into the next stitch on the bottom here. Grab your tool. Pull it through like that. Put your hand through. Make sure they're equal at the bottom or as best as you can get them. Bring it back here and then grab those pieces and pull them through. Pull it really tight. Tight as you can get it like that. And then you move on to your next color. Grab your two pieces. Put them together as best as you can. Make sure they're kind of equal at the bottom. You can get them that way. 
go directly into the next stitch make sure you're getting the next stitch because sometimes it looks like there's tool in that stitch but there's really not go into the next one pull your tool through put your fingers through it like that pull it to where it's pretty close to being equal and then pull it through again nice and tight and you can see it's really starting to the more you do it's gonna it's gonna bunch up and get wavy and that's fine you want it to be thick you don't want it to be see-through and at the end it still might be a little see-through you know you might it's a, it'd be your on your discretion whether you want to put little leggings on or some type of slip or something go to the next stitch Do the same thing with whatever colors you're choosing to use. Pull it through. Get them equal at the bottom the best that you can. Remember it does not have to be perfect because we'll trim it up a bit at the end. Pull it nice and tight. Like that. Next color. Do the same thing. Two pieces of tool together go into the very next stitch I always gotta look close sometimes I it's hard for me to see just make sure you're not skipping any stitches because you want to get as much tool on this dress as possible color got your two pieces together find your next stitch through and just do the same thing you've been doing get them kind of equal at the bottom and then pull them right through the loop pull it nice and tight color and tight just like that now I'm going to start that's my collar pattern now I'm going to start it over again go into the next stitch remember make sure you're getting sometimes you have to pull your tool over to make sure you're getting the correct stitch you don't want to miss any I've noticed using different colors here that some of the colors are stiffer than others. It's kind of weird, but I guess that's just the dye, maybe. Pull it tight. Like that. Now I'm just going to repeat that. As you can see, it's going to be tight. It's going to be thick. You want to repeat that on this bottom layer all the way to your last stitch. And then what you do is you start completely over on the top layer doing the same thing you start the same color here right up here on this top layer so I'm going to start my red and my next stitch will be my orange and the yellow again or whatever colors you're using if you're using one solid color that's fine but I'm going to do the exact same thing that I'm doing right here on this bottom layer all the way to the end and I'm going to do the same I'm going to do it on the top all the way to the end so it's going to be a lot of tool and like I said it's going to be pretty thick but that's what you want it to look like you want it to be thick 
So I'm going to finish this up. I'm going to go all the way across the bottom. And then I'm going to start into my, in my top stitch. Or my first stitch on this top row that we made. And do the same thing. So we'll have two layers exactly the same. And then we'll get that finished up. And then we'll put some Velcro and stuff on the back of our dress. Okay, now what you want to do, excuse my mess here, I don't have a lot of space. Is you want to take your softener that you mixed up, and it's this, I've already sprayed a little bit, but it's probably going to be a big, staticky ball of mess. So all you do is just mist it down, get in between the layers, and it takes a little while. And then you can just take it, and you comb it, and get all those pieces coated with your fabric softener mix. And that's what will tame it down. Just keep doing this. Spraying. You probably got to do it for a while. Yeah, make sure. Come on with your fingers. Get in between the rows. But this is when it's going to take that big ball of matted stuff and make it look uh, not, you know, halfway presentable. So you just do this to the whole thing, front and back. Make sure you're getting in coating every piece with your fabric softener and this will help it lay down. Now these tool dresses they'll tend to get staticky again pretty quick so if you're making this for something special you might want to carry a little bottle of spray with you so you can spray it down you know because they do pick up it the tool picks up static real easy and you just have to keep working working it like this until it lays straight. Like I said, I've been doing it for a little while already. Mine was a complete ball of, just a ball <laughs> of a mess. So, but now mine's starting to lay down a little bit. And once you get it all laid flat, then you can take it and cut them all equal to your desired length. However long or short you want it, just get them all cut the same length, which I've already kind of been working on too. So I'm going to finish doing that, um, getting all the static out of it, getting, making sure I didn't miss any when I was cutting it, getting them all the same length. So this part will take a bit to get your, your tool all tamed down, looking, looking nice. But really it's pretty easy to get it done. This is a little time consuming. Just keep spraying it coating all your pieces until it lays flat. Like that. Okay, now what you want to do is take your Velcro and put Velcro your pieces together and measure it out to where it comes not all the way to the top, probably that last row, and then the last row from the bottom. And clip it off like that. And then all you want to do is hot glue that on. Now you can sew it on if you prefer. I'm just going to hot glue it. Okay, so I got the back of my piece facing me right now. So what I want to do is undo your pieces here. You want, it's going to fold up like this. So you want one piece to be on the back. And this hot glue it right on like that, real easy. And then the other piece to be on the front. And you just hot glue that on, just like that. Sorry at the bad angle here. And then they'll clip on like that together. They'll fold over and clip. So hot glue one piece on the back and then flip it over onto the front side. This is the front of my work. It doesn't matter which piece you use. Hot glue it on the front, right towards Kind of towards the edge like that both pieces make sure you get a hot glue good remember you can sew it on too with the thread and needle if you feel like that would be better but i think hot glue is going to work pretty good because it's just kind of a dress that you wear on a special occasion you know you're not going to wash it and wear it all the time so i'm just going to go ahead and hot glue my two pieces on <laughs> 